Hello, my name is Craig Thompson. I am Head of Agriculture and Countryside at Maisca College. Uh, so what I'm going to do is give you a little uh, tour, a virtual tour, if you like, of our resources for our agriculture students at, uh, at Maisca College. So just starting off with this slide, really, in the background, you can see a picture of, of what we call the Rural Skills Centre. And that's our building where we teach uh, all, pretty much all our uh, agriculture and countryside FE students, uh, our HE students, those that are doing um, uh, foundation degrees and degrees, they'll do some of the teaching uh, in there uh, and then some at other sites such as a FIT centre which we'll look at in a few minutes and the HE centre. So, uh, so that's our rural skills centre uh, where most of the are based. Uh, a little bit about the history. Um, so the college was founded in 1894 at a site in Hutton. Uh, we still have some land there, but we don't have uh, any buildings uh, as such. Um, uh, it's, the land is let out uh, in effect for, for uh, horses. Uh, the buildings were sold for development and allowed uh, the college to invest in the main site at Mayerska. Um, and that was developed in 1969. Um, so that's where how long we've been at Mayeska. And uh, we were incorporated in 1992. And that means basically the college became self-governing. Before that, it was uh, owned by Lancashire County Council. Uh, we are self-governing, independent. Um, we have a board of governors uh, who the principal and the senior management team report to and they make sure that uh, the college is achieving its objectives. Uh, we do have links with the University of Central Lancashire. Um, so all our degree programmes are validated by the University of Central Lancashire, but they don't uh, own anything of Mayeska. Basically, we, uh, they contract us in effect to deliver uh, their agriculture programmes together with a number of other uh, land-based uh, degree programmes. And um, so, so yeah, completely independent and, uh, by, by my ISCA. Um, this little picture, and I'm just going to, to turn off my uh, camera. Um, uh, this little picture was taken in 1969. Uh, it appeared in the Farmer's Guardian. Um, and uh, it, no, we won't expect our agriculture students to dress like this nowadays. Um, but that, that was how it was back then in 1969, uh, clearly disbudding a car, young calf there. Um, and so that task is still done today. Uh, and so as agriculture students, certainly on FE programmes, that's one of the practical tasks that you'll learn uh, to do. OK, so this is uh, just a little image of, uh, of the campus and the farms that I've taken off Google Earth. So you can see uh, the campus here in this area. Um, I'll just ha uh, highlight um, with with the pen so you can see what I'm talking about. So so what we've got in in this little red circle here, where I'm just highlighting, uh, we've we've actually got the rural skills centre, um, and then uh, our FE students will be using the the driving track here. Um, so this is agriculture engineering. The agriculture engineering building is this building here. Um, so we, we work quite closely and obviously machinery operations, tractor driving, uh, ATV handling and what have you is taken in, in that area there. Uh, it's a walk across the campus um, and to the central student area. So we've got the library, the core, some teaching facilities, central admin. Uh, and the canteen, of course, um, uh, uh, the uh, college restaurant is is all in this area here, uh, in in right in the middle of the campus there. So it's it's a good five minute walk across. The other area that I just want to highlight is this area here, and that's um, where we have our uh, HE centre and where our degree students uh, will will go and it's a quiet area, there's a quiet study area there and uh, various teach, uh, teaching classrooms. Um, so, so there will be some HE lectures that will take place 
uh, in in that uh, HE Learning Centre. Uh, going across the fields, um, so you would walk out of the back of the rural school centre and and this footpath through uh, through what we call Brock Meadow. Uh, so you walk through Brock Meadow and across Cottage Field, and you end up in the back of, of Lodge Farm. Um, and Lodge Farm is split uh, on two sides of the road. St Michael's runs through the middle. Um, we've got the beef unit on one side together with feed storage, silage clamps, what have you, and slurry storage and, and the fit centre. This is where the fit centre is here. It's that building there. Um, and then uh, on the other side of the road, the south side of St Michael's Road, we've got Lodge Farm dairy unit um, and uh, yeah, and the, and the calves. And, and then obviously I, I've said the, the equine area uh, used for stabling the old uh, brick buildings. Uh, so, so yeah, that's the campus. Okay, so we've got the uh, the college estate here. Uh, I've just actually uh, changed office and uh, and and changed clothes. Obviously, um, I just needed to update this uh, this particular slide. Um, so, in the college estate, 300 hectares. It's predominantly uh, grassland. We do grow a small area of crops. Um, we grow whole crop wheat, whole crop barley. Uh, uh, this time we've grown a little bit of forage rape as well to fatten some uh, lambs and some sheep on. Um, so uh, we also have some game cover crops sown uh, at various locations across the estate to uh, support the game keeping courses that we offer and we also have uh, some conservation areas at woodlands and what have you that are managed uh, for uh, conservation and uh, our ecology and uh, conservation students will access those sites. Uh, we have also have the River Brock running through uh, the estate. So you can see the blue line uh, that runs uh, through by Light Ash Farm there and along the back of the campus. So that's a nice uh, river habitat. Uh, we get all sorts of wildlife uh, along there. It's an important corridor for wildlife. Um, you can see the, uh, the, the Rural Skills Centre, which is uh, sort of to one end of the campus and we can walk across the fields. Uh, it's about 15 minutes across the Lodge Farm, um, but we tend to use the minibus for either taking students down to Lodge Farm or to Lee Farm, depending on what the practical session is. Um, so, so yeah, that's the uh, college uh, estate. Uh, three farms, as you can see, Lodge Farm being the main farmstead, Lee Farm being where we have uh, the, sh the sheep um, and a few beef there. Light Ash Farm, we don't have any buildings. It uh, is really just uh, the land only. Um, I should also say that we are actually uh, at tents uh, on the farm uh, and our landlord is the Duchy of Lancaster. Uh, or in other words, the Queen. Uh, she she is uh, uh, the Duke of Lancaster, uh, and so she is our uh, landlord. And she does occasionally visit. Uh, last time she visited was in 2015, and some of our students uh, were involved in putting on a display and actually got to have a few words with her when she visited as, as well, which is uh, was fantastic. So, so yeah, uh, really nice uh, estate, all in a, a, a ring fence, pretty much, uh, which makes it easy to manage. Um, and uh, yeah, a typical sort of filed farm, really. Um, so it really benefits uh, our agriculture students. So we've been really fortunate in that Lodge Farm, we've, we've had a significant investment uh, uh, government investment uh, that, that supported uh, the college. Uh, we, we've put in a bid and we're successful to get some money um, and it allowed us to basically redevelop uh, the beef unit at Lodge Farm. Uh, so this is uh, what we call the Food Farm and Innovation Technology Centre. So we have teaching facilities in there. Uh, it's used by both industry for training and by uh, some of our students. Uh, so there is a little bit of teaching that goes on in there. Certainly our degree students will uh, have some teaching based in there. Um, so 
so yeah this is a fantastic uh, addition to to our resources and then at the back of the fit center you've got the uh, the um, the livestock innovation center and you've got the silage clamps there as well look so this is just a little video that uh, pans around shows you uh, basically the entrance of, of lodge farm so what's coming to shot now is the old victorian buildings of, of lodge farm dairy unit there now now no longer in use you can just see the new dairy unit well i said new it was uh, it's over 20 years old um so that's the dairy unit there uh, the old victorian bu buildings are uh, used for horses equine uh, the pond that takes the roof water off uh, the fit center and the livestock innovation center which you can just see at the back behind the fit center there just poking into view uh, so we'll have now okay so this is our livestock innovation center um, so it was a, a put up here about three four years ago now 2016 um, and uh, basically using best practice design principles uh, so we've got a big light ridge down the middle of the building that lets lots of light in and also lets uh, ventilation allows ventilation all the warm air as it rises it rises up to the peak and then can go out to the sides of that light ridge um, at the side of the buildings you'll see they are uh, completely open at the moment um, but they can, in winter the clothes what we've got are automatic curtains that move up and down depending on the weather and the weather is measured by little weather stations at either side of the building so when it's uh, it's cold uh, and windy uh, you'll find that the, the curtains are completely up uh, usually in the middle of winter uh, and in summer when it's really hot they're completely down and then uh, they can be anywhere in between up and down as well uh, so it allows that controlled ventilation of the building the end being to, to create the, the optimum atmosphere within uh, this building um, so yeah uh, really nice uh, design a central feed passage uh, scraping passage embedded pens uh, the water troughs there will tip over so they're easy to clean so uh, cattle will always have clean water in front of them and then just on the left hand side we'll look at it in a minute is the uh, handling system uh, so, just so this is the handling system uh, I, again based on on good design principles um, that have come from a lady called Temple Grandin uh, and it's worth uh, just putting her name into uh, Google. Uh, she's an American animal behaviorist, uh, scientist, um, and she, uh, she, she has this ability to see things how cattle see things and designs handling facilities, uh, basically uh, revolutionized handling facilities across the world. Um, so a lot of uh, slaughterhouses, uh, any anywhere where they need to handle cattle have have changed their handling systems based on uh, the the research from Temple Grandin. And so you'll see that there's a well just right at the end there's a semicircular uh, forcing pen. Um, so animals will walk down and uh, they're directed into the race. So that forcing pen just gently pushes them into the uh, race directs them into the race. The race has an S band, uh, bend in it, uh, and you'll see that uh, the stock board against the uh, sides of the forcing pen and also against the side of the race. So that means that the cattle can't see out. Uh, the cattle have eyes at the side of the head because they're prey animals. Uh, they evolved to, to keep an eye on potential predators, so they need to keep as, uh, as wide a view as possible. Um, while they were eating um, and, and they do get easily spooked and so if you can create a solid environment where they, they can't see any they can't be distracted or spooked they're likely to move through uh, that area very quickly and so by putting a, an S bend in the race it allows uh, 
um, the animals to, to keep moving forward. We've got a hydraulic crush at the end and that allows uh, identification of the animals through the electronic ID tags that each animal has in its ear. Um, so the, the tags are automatically read, recorded on a computer and the weight is recorded. All that's done automatically, the animal walks through and uh, if that's all we're doing, uh, that's fine. We're just recording weight uh, for calculating daily live weight gains. That's done by the computer uh, so that we can check uh, the animals are growing as we expect them to grow. Uh, and if they're not, then we can ask questions why and, and, and investigate why. Um, the computer also allows us to record any treatments if we're, for example, giving them a, a worm a treatment or whatever it is that we're doing uh, with the with the cattle TV testing, for example, um, so we can we can record treatments as as well. This is at the back of the shed, uh, so we have this covered slurry stores. Uh, the the slurry from the dairy unit is pumped underground across to these uh, stores, uh, and by putting a cover on, it saves all that area getting. Uh, uh, having rainfall in it so in it we get to over a meter a year of rainfall um, and, and that uh, works out basically we're saving a ring of uh, what it would be in effect rainwater needing to be spread uh, so we do a little calculation with our students to calculate how many uh, loads of slurry one ring is worth um, and it, it's quite a bit, uh, obviously big saving on time and uh, machinery. Uh, these are the covered slurry, uh, covered silage clamp, should I say? <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, again, it, cover, covered silage clamps just make it uh, uh, a bit more weather resistant, a bit, uh, bit less likely for the uh, Salad sheets to get damaged by weather and and uh, what have you. Uh, good quality silage depends on an airtight seal, um, so uh, and it also allows uh, feed storage and what have you uh, when we need it. Uh, this is the dairy unit, uh, the entrance to the dairy unit. Um, so we'll have a look. In I said we've two hundred dairy cows. Uh, this is a little video. We'll just have a look at that. So you'll see that we've got some cows in. Uh, this is based, uh, this shot's from the middle of the building, but on the other side is completely empty. So we split our cows into two groups, uh, fresh carved cows up to uh, being PD positive, and then cows after they've been PD positive go into uh, uh, mid and late lactation. Um, and those cows actually go out to grass in, in summer. You'll see the plastic cubicles that we've put in uh, and we've put in the mattresses as well. Uh, so there's a 10 centimeter mattress, the plastic cubicles actually bend and flex so they're very comfortable for the cows to lie in. We want cows to lie down as much as possible, uh, ideally 12 to 13 hours a day. Um, and then you can see the outer parlour feeders as well. So there's two cows in there. Uh, the front gates of one is open. Uh, so that cow's finished eating. So th the idea of the outer parlour feeders is that um, the cows are fed little and often. So uh, these, these fresh cows that are in the cubicles, uh, they're the ones uh, that actually need careful uh, feed management. Um, to make sure that uh, their energy requirements are being met and that they don't go, go into what we call uh, negative energy balance. Uh, some cows do go into negative energy balance and will need treating, but it's a problem. So we, the, the aim is to try and minimize the risk of cows going into negative energy balance, hence why we keep them in. It's easier to control the diet, the feed intakes, monitor, make sure that they are getting what they need and uh, we can treat them uh, with, with a, a like high energy syrupy drink um, uh, if they're not getting uh, uh, enough energy. Um, so that prevent, prevent, helps prevent something called ketosis. But all these sorts of things you'll learn as you go through your courses. Um, so, so that's the inside our dairy. 
Um, the next slide just shows again a, a, a still picture taken from the middle. So we've got actually, uh, you can see these out of parlor feeders. There's, there's uh, a bank of two uh, there on each side, and then there's another bank of two as well, just out of shot. So we have four banks of two uh, out of parlor feeders. Um, so we can feed uh, two different types of concentrate uh, to the cows again depending on it, on the nutrition and there's also this uh, little tank you can't just see it uh, on, on the top but there's a little plastic tank that's full of this uh, syrup a high energy syrup drink it's called propylene glycol uh, it's, it's basically just like syrup uh, but very high energy and uh, that's what we give cows that uh, are at risk of ketosis and are in, in negative energy balance. Uh, this is our milking parlour, it's a 2040, that means uh, there's 20 cows down each side, uh, two sides, so that's holding 40 cows. Um, so that's where the 40 comes from, the 20 comes from the, the fact that there's 20 clusters down the middle um, and uh, you milk one side and then swing over and attach the clusters to the other side while the side that's just been milked walks out and you load up the next side as well and then when you've done that you should uh, be ready for putting the uh, clusters on the other side so uh, quite an efficient system uh, it, it does require at least two staff really in there um, there is quite a strict protocol for, for milking the cows. We work in groups of five. Um, so we clean five teats and then attach the, the clusters. I've done a little separate video on, on that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's our milking part. And we've, uh, as I've said, the, the, we, we, we've invested in technology and uh, we, the outer parlor feeders were part of the technology. But also um, in the milking parlour, we've replaced all the electrical components and milk meters and what have you with uh, an AFI milk system. Um, so the, uh, uh, the the device with the little clear screen there, that's the milk meter that measures the actual amount of milk that each cow gives. Uh, uh, and then it goes through this AFI lab and, and that measures various things. Uh, it measures the uh, the electrical conductivity of the milk. It detects whether there's any blood in the milk. It also uh, measures the fat content and the protein content of the milk as the cow's being milked. Uh, so, so this is brand new technology. Um, it, there's not many farms that ha will have this installed. Um, so it's useful to know the fat and protein content of each cows. It's useful breeding information. You want to breed off cows that give high quality milk, especially if you're on a contract that requires high quality milk. Um, but more importantly, it actually um, measures the, the, the ratio of fat and protein, um, and, and that is directly linked to the health status of the cow uh, and to uh, ruminant nutrition conditions called uh, uh, acidosis and ketosis. Um, so acidosis is when uh, basically they're getting an upset stomach um, and they, usually they've eaten too much readily digestible starch uh, concentrates um, so that's why you want to give concentrates little little and often uh, you don't want to give them large amounts of concentrates because it, it causes an upset in the ph of the rumen uh, and that leads to acidosis so uh, and, and then that will cause an imbalance of the fat and protein content in the milk Another thing is uh, ketosis, and that's actually when the cow starts to become properly sick. It's not just a, uh, an upset st stomach, so to speak. It's the cow is properly s sick and can uh, it can be quite serious and can lead to what we call displaced amnesia. So, um, so yeah, the, the fat and protein content of the milk, the, the proportion is very important, uh, and it's the first indicator of either acidosis or or ketosis um, 
So again, you'll learn about this as part of your dairy production animal science modules. Um, but uh, managing cows uh, in early lactation is absolutely critical. And, uh, and this little device is really important. What it will do is, is detect cows, the first signs of, of, of any uh, help, uh, health issue, such as acidosis, ketosis, and it will send a message to the farm manager's phone. It will flag a message up on the computer, but even better, it will send a message to the out of parlor feeder that the, the sick cow needs uh, a treatment of this propylene glycol, this syrupy drink, and it will automatically administer that when the cow next goes in. So it's identifying that, that little blue box with the green light on is identifying a potential problem and then doing something about it without intervention from the farmer. Obviously, the farmer would want to check the animal as well, but it, it's treating it. So uh, it, it's doing everything it can uh, to, to make sure that that uh, animal doesn't get become uh, very sick. Uh, this is uh, just a, a little image of, of uh, our students, some of our students uh, down at Lee Farm. Uh, as I said, there's not really much down at Lee Farm. Uh, there's just this uh, lambing shed uh, where we bring the sheep in for lambing. Uh, there's a few beef cattle down there as well. Um, so we, uh, yeah, that, that's our uh, Lee Farm uh, resource. So the students obviously the, the key time is uh, is around tupping time, preparing the, the sheep for tupping. So that's one of the first things we start off with in uh, in September and October, getting the, the ewes ready for tupping. Um, the tup goes in and then obviously the, the, the really important time uh, is, is lambing time uh, when we're, it's all hands to the pump really, uh, to make sure that uh, sheep are well looked after and, and we get as, as close to that 200% lambing percentage as we, we possibly can. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's our sheep. And that, that's really it for a quick tour around the farm. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you found that useful. If you've not had a chance to look around the college before, um, I know it's not quite as good as looking around the, the real thing, but uh, hopefully you've got a flavour of what uh, what we have in terms of agriculture. Um, it's well worth following us on our Facebook page. Um, so if you put into Facebook at Maiska Ag and Country, that should take you to uh, our Facebook page and we put things up there of what our students have been doing and uh, little success stories and what have you. Uh, and it's also worth following us on Twitter. Uh, I really encourage students to, to engage with social media. Uh, it's how industry communicate with each other uh, and it's really good for you to 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 start developing that network of contacts um, and, and to engage in communication with the industry. Um, so Twitter especially is, is what industry professionals and industry organisations use to communicate. Facebook tends to be a bit more friends and family a bit more informal but Twitter is is really very good for for uh, following industry leaders um, so uh, if you're interested you can follow uh, even Matt and myself for the Ag and Country uh, see who we follow and then you can follow whoever you want to out of those uh, it's, a, it's a good starting point but uh, yeah I hope you found that useful and uh, we shall look forward to hopefully seeing you very soon uh, on one of our courses. Thank you very much.